Caitlin Deaver. Hey, Caitlin, how are you doing? I'm doing so good, Perry. How are you doing? I'm okay. I was telling you earlier, I'm in good company. I've got my cat with me. So do, doing what I can to keep my spirits up and seeing your face today is definitely a big part of that. I'm so happy we get to do this. I know. I'm so happy to see your face. This is so, so nice. It's such a great start to the day. <laughs> I'm glad I can kick it off strong for you. So I'm actually surprised I've never asked you this because I love hearing about what inspired somebody to get into the industry. And we've spoken a good deal at this point. So for you, what is the the film or the performance that first made you say, I have to do this, I have to be an actor? Oh, I think about this a lot because I, I remember growing up on obviously Disney Channel, Lizzie McGuire, That's So Raven, even Stevens, all of that shaped me as a person. Um, DCOM extras, like Disney Channel original films, <laughs> really, really shaped who I am. Um, but I think watching those early on um, really made me love making people laugh a lot. Um, I was always doing, I was doing plays with my sisters um, growing up. And that was always really fun for me, making making my parents laugh. It was, I remember it being such a good feeling. <laughs> um, and then the first time I watched, the, the first time I was allowed to watch a scary movie, um, my parents let me watch The Sixth Sense. And I remember being so shocked by how real everything seemed and how real the characters felt. Um, it was the first time I had ever seen something um, so like, I, I don't know, it was it was really, really shocking for me as, as, a, as a kid. I think I was maybe eight or nine when I was first allowed to watch it. And it was actually Toni Collette's performance that really blew me away. And um, that was the moment I remember, I distinctly remember that moment being the moment like, oh, you can also move people in a different way other than just like making people laugh. You can actually, you know, cry and, and scream and yell. And, and, and I didn't, I didn't realize that until watching that movie. And it was that movie that I think was the, 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 the push for me to really want to do it, do it. Now I also can't believe we've never made the genre connection here because horror, horror is my thing. Have you, <laughs> have you ever done a horror movie yourself? I mean, I might be forgetting something, but I feel like you haven't. No, I haven't. It's something that I've been dying to do. It's a genre that I've been really, really wanting to do. It's, it's, I've just, it just hasn't come around yet. Um, but I'm, that's something I'm definitely wanting to do for sure. And I make a suggestion because this is always on the top of my mind. And I've said this like more times than I can count recently. And I have no clue what the story is for this, but they're making a scream five and whatever the lead role is, I think you should lobby for it. They are. That they I didn't are. know that. Okay. I'll get on that. Just going to put that. put that out there into the world right now. A suggestion. So another thing that I often think about when you're first starting out in any job, really, is that sometimes it's scary to ask the silly questions when you're starting something new. So can you remember any questions that you wished that you had the nerve to ask earlier in your career that maybe might help somebody who's just starting out now? Oh, my gosh. Um... Yeah, I remember, I, I, I do remember having that feeling all the time um, on set. I remember, I remember not really, oh God, I think it, my ring just got caught in my, my hair. I remember, I think I remember sometimes not understanding when, like, if, like, the difference between rolling and action and some some directors don't call action so that's sort of like a a confusing uh thing and i think also some directors i learned early on like to do just like one or two takes and then because i i think what i was prepared for going in is that oh you get many takes to do 
and try different things. When in reality, I think I've now learned you just got to kind of have to you, you have to be ready and prepared from the first take. Because I remember doing a movie um, where the director just just d did more. he was like a guy that liked one take, <laughs> one take. Um, and that was sort of like a bit scary. And I wish I, I would have asked early on. Um, and I think also I remember being on, uh, <laughs> I was a very, 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 played a very small part in a Clint, Clint Eastwood film called J. Edgar. Very small. I don't even think you would, if you blinked, you would definitely miss me. Um, but I remember being on his set, for example, and he, I didn't know this at the time, but I guess he is known for sort of just like rolling, rolling into the scene and just like doing it. And there's no distinction between like not doing the scene and doing the scene. It just sort of like goes. I didn't realize that. And I was maybe, I don't even remember how old I was when I did that, but I just remember being ridiculously confused. I was I was I was afraid to ask questions at a young age earlier. I even remember when I did the thing that's coming to mind now. This is just a silly, funny story. But I remember when I did Curb Your Enthusiasm um, and in my audition, the, the whole audition was was improv and the audition was fine. I just um, I, I went online and studied the Girl Scout cookie names and I just went in and did it and it worked out great and then I ended up getting it and all of it happened so fast. That was the other thing. Like sometimes everything would just happen so fast and all of a sudden you're like put on to set and and they're they're touching you up and then they call action and then you're just going. Um and so that was all scary. And I remember being on set of Curb and and they put me in front of, I, I didn't even see Larry David yet. I, I think I had briefly met him once and then they put me outside of this door. I'm supposed to greet him as a Girl Scout at his front door. And they put me like behind the door and they shut the door and I'm sitting there panicking going, okay, I'm just like going over everything in my head that I want to improv. And <laughs> I remember thinking, I don't know his name on the show. I don't know if he's, if, does he play Larry? Does he, is he Larry? I don't know if his name is Larry on the show or, and I panicked and I asked one of the camera guys that was standing right next to me. I was like, what's his name on the show? And then they called action and it was so, I was so <laughs> nervous. Um, but it just moves very fast. It just moves very fast sometimes. Um, and sometimes when you're not prepared for it. So you just gotta have to, have to be prepared to go with, whatever flow they're going on. I still feel like even later in your career, sometimes it's scary to ask, ask questions, but yeah. Uh, oh, bye cat. <laughs> uh, so you already brought up uh, J Edgar and I believe J Edgar, go away Dewey. I believe <laughs> J Edgar and um, bad teacher happens pretty close together. So I also wanted to ask you about working with Jay Kasdan, who I've had the pleasure of talking to a lot recently. And I just really admire what he's done with the Jumanji franchise. So yeah. what, was, what was it about working with him so early on in your career that I don't know, maybe made you think that you were glad you could have that kind of environment on set to start off with studio films? Yeah, I think it was so, <laughs> I think it was, it was funny because I, uh, that was one of the first, yeah, I guess first like films I, I, I was able to do where there were also a lot of kids on set. So I got used to being around people my age early on and also being on a studio film set where craft service is good and you know there's really big fancy cameras so it really felt like a like a movie set um uh and being on I remember being on that movie and just having just the best time again because I, I think you know I I quickly realized after that that you're sometimes the only kid on on a movie set and Bad Teacher was a set that I was around a bunch of kids my age and it really just felt like we were all at summer camp and um, at summer camp with Cameron Diaz and Justin Timberlake and we at our lunch breaks we got to play basketball with Justin Timberlake so like best summer camp you could possibly imagine I guess. Um, so all of it I, I remember just even on that one I remember really soaking 
everything, everything in and really taking in how Jake directed, um, especially because there's so much to juggle on that kind of movie. And um, again, that was also one of my first um, comedies that I had ever done. So that was really cool. And I remember just like being so in awe of everyone and and just taking everything in and taking in how cool Cameron Diaz was about everything and just like, you know, I had, I remember being extremely nervous when my character has to um, sell uh, or give her, give her uh, cookies. I, I, my character made her cookies and I'm knocking at her window and she's sitting in her car smoking weed. And uh, I just, I, I remember being so incredibly nervous and she was just so cool and chill and calm. And I realize now that she had just, you know, it's just because it, that was, she had been on so many movies and she had done it so many times at that point. Um, and I was like, God, I can't wait. I can't wait to be just that chill because <laughs> I don't feel chill right now. Wait, uh, do, do I dare ask if you've kind of gained any chill at all? Or does every single, do you kind of get those, the butterflies in your stomach every single time you start another big role? Yeah, I I do the butterflies never go away they've gotten i've i definitely have gotten a lot chiller since say bad teacher i i i i definitely feel like i have um i don't think and i think for auditions in particular auditions have have gotten a lot a lot easier um even though i still do genuinely get so nervous for auditions still. Um, uh, I used to get like painfully nervous for auditions, um, which I had hoped at that time, I was hoping that I would, I'm like, oh my God, is it gonna be like this forever? And I'm gonna feel this nervous every single time. Um, and I still do, but it definitely has gotten a lot easier. Um, but even for, for being on film sets, I definitely get nervous, especially when I have, um, when I have to speak in front of a crowd in a scene, it's still it does it feels like real life, and it feel like I'm 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 literally speaking to a crowd, and I have this monologue that I have to recite, and that just gets me really sweating. Um, but yeah, no, the butterflies don't really go away, and they kind of come and go. I think it depends on the on the. Scene. But I, 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 in general, I, I, I feel really, I feel like really content when I'm on sets. I feel like all the, I think I get most of the nerves out of the way for the audition process, through the audition process. And then once I'm on set, I think I've realized now you can kind of just trust yourself and know that like they've, they've picked you for a reason and they've supported you and there's pressure because of all of that like they're handing you this this role and they they want you to do a good job but at the same time it's also like okay they they obviously picked me for a certain reason and I have to like trust that and know that it's gonna all be okay <laughs> I still get nervous for every single interview I do and I hold tight to the idea that those nerves come from a place of like deep passion and really caring and even though I want to relax a little I never yeah. want that to go away because I'm always afraid that I'm not going to care as much as I did before. Oh, I know. I think if you're if you're not if you're not nervous, then what's I mean, I, there's genuine. I think even for uh, like plays, for example, I get so nervous doing plays. Um, but the feeling I have after when the play is done and I haven't done a lot of plays and I want to actually do more theater, but the feeling that you get after knowing that like you've done a good job, you got through it, you got through something that you didn't think you could get through and you finally got through it. And all of those nerves were just kind of like you, I usually like try to use the nerves as much as I can um, because I think they actually sometimes help, but oh my God, the feeling after like finishing a play is, one of the best feelings ever because it's just like a wave of just like oh my god it's just like a wave of weight um so it's like one of the best feelings 
Yeah. So you bring up the nerve, the nerves that come with doing a big monologue. I'm mm-hmm. curious, what do you find more challenging, doing a scene with a whole ton of dialogue where you got to give some sort of speech or maybe doing a scene that's very, very heavily reliant on you internalizing emotions? I think, I think it's, for me, it's, Mm, oh god it's hard it's hard to say that's a really tough question I feel like sometimes I I'm a huge I'm actually a huge fan of watching a scene where I feel like the the emotions are internalized and I love watching scenes that are that almost have no dialogue I love watching that as a person so doing that as 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 an actor um I also really love doing that I think it is I think it's kind of I, I I think it's harder for me to to do a, a scene where you're kind of like giving it all out and 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 having to memorize a bunch of lines. I think that that's probably I think that's probably harder for me. So that makes me think of your role on Unbelievable, which seems to be like a balance of the two. Marie has a whole bunch of emotional outbursts, but so much of that show is just heavily reliant on what's going through her head from top to bottom. So when you think back on your experience making that show, was was there any particular scene that you found the most challenging, whether you expected expected that to be the case before or not? Yeah, it's so funny. I had all of these plans for the prep for that show. I had, I had plans how scenes would go. And then most of the time I would be completely surprised, um, which just goes to show, I think you can't, you can't really, there's no sort of set formula for anything. I mean, there, there's so many different ways a scene could be played out. And I think for that show in particular, I remember doing so much preparation beforehand before we started filming and it just it it I think I was I put so much pressure on myself to get it right because I felt like I was in I was in service of of Marie I I was doing it for her and everyone who was making the show was doing this for her um and to tell her story in the best way possible so all knowing all of that was just intense and I think because I put all of that pressure on myself I it 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 made me sort of like overthink everything before and so on certain days where I when I finally started filming I kind of told myself all right well whatever prep you've done you have to just kind of again trust it and know that you have put in the work and that again, it's all going to be okay. Um, but I remember certain. I remember like the 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 scenes with the detectives in particular really was surprising to me. Um, I think, and again, it was surprising because of how incredible um, those actors are. I mean, they're just they're just brilliant. And so doing those scenes with them all day, we had we had like two or three days. We just shot all of the interview scenes between the detectives and Marie. And um, there was one particular moment that I remember feeling as an actor, I was telling myself, okay, I, I know I'm telling the truth. I know my character's telling the truth. And I, and I know, I know all of that. And yet I still feel like I'm not because of the way he was making me feel like I, like I, I, like I was saying something wrong. And that's almost like a little kid feeling it. I felt like a little kid that was in trouble. And I didn't expect to have that feeling until I was in the room with the actors and, and he was, was saying all of these things that I, I, yes, I, I had obviously like gone over the lines. I knew my lines and I knew his lines, but at the same time, I just, I don't know. It was it was really intense doing those scenes with Eric because I just it was such a surprising feeling that I ended up really um, 
I, I gave into that feeling because I, I realized like, oh, that that is that is a horrible feeling to be telling the truth and to then all of a sudden be convincing yourself that you're not. It was bizarre. It was really weird. So that was a really surprising um, that was a really surprising moment. But that was always happening on that show. Um, yeah. Yeah. You probably know this already, but your your work on that show is I, it's it's really mind blowing. And I give you guys all the credit in the world for putting yourself in such a tough mind frame like that. And just everybody giving everything they had to tell that story the way that you guys did. And I was, I was reading a while back that when you were preparing for this role, you didn't want to talk to the, the real Marie just yet, but now that the show is out and it, it is so widely beloved right now, have you guys connected over how it all turned out? Yeah, it's been it's been so incredible to to see all of the love that people have for the show and and how and I can you can really see how much people are learning um, from it, which was I think one of the many goals of of making the show is that people could see it and then learn from it um, and learn how trauma really really affects someone for the rest of their life. I so. At the beginning, I, I remember talking to Susanna and, and Lisa about it, and it wasn't that um, I didn't want to because I actually I asked about it, and I and I was I was I was honestly unsure. I didn't know I didn't know what what the right thing to do was, and I and I was already so, and I think I can speak for everyone when I say this that that everyone really felt so grateful that she was even allowing us to tell her story um, in such a big way on a, on a platform that was going to be put on a platform like, like Netflix. Um, and so I remember talking to them early on and, and we all kind of came to this, this, uh, this conclusion that I, it, we didn't, we only wanted to do what she was comfortable with because again, it was such a privilege that she was allowing us to tell her story. So I only wanted, to, I I only wanted to do what she wanted to do, and I, I really did want to respect her privacy because this is something that still still is with her, and she carries it with her every day. Um, so, but it was it really brought me to tears when Susanna. I think we were doing press somewhere I forget where we were for, I, I can't remember where we were but she came up to me and she said I just sent you an email I just forwarded you an email you should really take a look at it and it was an email that Marie sent to Ken Armstrong that I mean, just it 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 was so it was it it really brought me to tears because she said that she watched the show and and she loved it and it it brought her a lot of closure which is it's just really overwhelming because it just out of everything that is literally all you could ever ask for in making and making something like this you know it's just it, they don't need anything else it's it's such a it's such an honor to to hear that from her which is it's it was it was really a lot for me it was really really just I, I can't even begin to say how overwhelmed I was. <laughs> I can understand that. That that's such a beautiful thing. I appreciate you sharing that right now. Yeah. I have a million and one questions about unbelievable, but we gotta hit a little bit of everything. And you knew that I wasn't letting this call end without asking you about Book Smart. And you know how I feel about the movie, and I do think that this had a very happy ending, but I have a tougher question for you right now because the movie premieres at South by Southwest. It gets a rave response. Everyone's all excited about it. Then it hits theaters and it doesn't do super well at the box office. Mm -hmm. How much do you put that on your shoulders? Are you able to brush it off and say it is what it is? How do you kind of get past a movie that is so, so good not getting the audience that I really deep down believe it deserved? Hmm. I mean, I feel like for me, I only, I sort of like tune a lot of things out. Um, and I, I, I uh, like, I don't, I don't like to pay attention to a, a lot of, a lot of 
uh, things when I when I'm when, in, in 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 terms of a, re a release of a film or even like starting a contract for a film. I, there's certain things that that don't really interest me um, because I all I want to do is is make the things that I love and work with the people that I love and do projects um, and and tell stories that I'm really really passionate about. So all of that at South by was just, I was, I was just having a good time because I was with everyone and yes, ever the, the premiere was amazing and it was the best, it was the best audience I'd ever been in. Just being in that, there was so much energy and love and tears and it was the best kind of reaction you could have ever hoped for. So I don't know. I think, I think Booksmart to me is a movie that lives on forever and I don't, I, I, I sort of am not, I never, I never, I never worried about any of that. I know how much love it has and I know how much love it got when it did come out and, um, and I know how hard it is for any movie to get seen just at all. So the fact that our movie, a movie that I had read, you know, five years before it had come out, I was just excited that we made it, you know, by the time we actually got around to making it, it, I was just happy that I got to work with the people that I got to work with. And I, I know that Booksmart is a movie that is still continuing to live on and, and I think it will for a long time, but I have so much love for my Booksmart family. Oh. That's why. That's why I say it was a happy ending with that one. I'm a I'm a box office nerd. Everybody on Collider knows it, so I always love tracking all of that. But to see yeah. how far that one went, as far as I mean, yeah. how it did on the awards circuit, and how many people just randomly tell me how important that movie was to them. So I, I think it's going to be it's going to be part of the you know the iconic ranks of high school comedies, or at least for me, for what's that's worth. So. Yeah. I also want to know if you've been paying attention to something else that's been circulating around the internet, and it has a little something to do with the adaptation of The Last of Us. There are a lot of people out there, even before we signed on to this call, people in the chat were like, she needs to play Ellie in The Last of Us. Have you seen that? And are you interested? Um, well, this is the first time I'm being <laughs> asked about this. On, um, Listen, I am a huge fan of the game, and I don't know if a lot of people know that, but I'm saying it now. I am a huge fan of that video game. I think it is a beautiful story. It's 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 a it's a just a wonderful narrative, and I I fell in love with that game um, when it came out, and um, I played it with my dad, and we just had the best time. Um, I'm not very good at it. I'm not, I'm not, my aim is really bad, and I, but I'm, I'm working on, working on getting better at playing, but, um, I love that. I love The Last of Us. I think it's an incredible story, and, um, I, I obviously have been seeing the internet, and I've obviously been seeing a lot of, a lot of that. Um, I've, Neil Druckmann, I did, I worked with him on Uncharted 4. Yes. The, I think he's a, the, one of the smartest guys I've ever met and one of the sweetest. And I would, I, I'm not, I'm not shutting it down, you know, I'm not shutting it down. I, I would, I would absolutely love to do that, but I don't know, I don't know where it's at yet, but I love The Last of Us. So as a fan of the game, let's say you were the one able to fan cast Joel, who would you pick? Oh my god. There's so many. I mean, obviously I've seen the I've seen there's so many people that would be so great for that role. I mean, I have I I've seen the 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 fan cast of of the uh, Hugh Jackman as Joel. I I I like that one. And I also know Hugh and I've worked with you and I think he's the nicest guy in the world. So I think he should be in everything. <laughs> yeah. I have to agree with that. My new favorite for the role might be Anson Mount though. He okay. was in Hell on Wheels and he was just in the recent uh, season of Star Trek Discovery and he is excellent. Oh, 
Okay, that's a good yeah. one. I know who you're talking about now. That is a good one. So you, so you have a to-do list after this call, by the way. Scream 5 and The Last of Us. Get on yeah. it. I will get on this. So I have a million more questions that I want to ask you, but I don't want to close this out without letting some of our viewers ask some themselves. And I've got a really good one here from Niall Collins, because I didn't get to ask about this movie, which is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Did you know Short Term 12 would be so impactful? Oh, hello, Niall. Um, I, I, I loved that script so much when I when I read it and I never I never thought that I would get it um just because it was just too good uh I I knew how I knew I I knew how it felt to be on that set and and the it, it felt so um it, it really felt like a family on that set and it felt like no one was concerned about the outcome of who saw it, how, how many people saw it. It was, they were, they were there to, um, make us make a story that was going to be moving, but also just to work together and make something that was, that was really important. Um, and that energy was, you could, you could really, really feel that energy. So I always know that when I'm on a set like that, I, I hope, you know, I never know any, and I, I don't like to have any expectations just because with films, you just, you just never, ever know. Um, and on that, and on that project, I, I just specifically remember how much love was on set, um, that I knew it had to, I, I, I knew that, that the world had to be, that the world had to see it. I knew, I knew it at the time and I knew that we were making something really special. Um, and seeing how, I mean, still, people are still talking about short term 12 and, um, I'm, I'm so happy to be a, just even a small part of that movie. It's just oh, the best. Give yourself more credit. You're a pretty big part of it. And the, the places that that ensemble overall has gone since it just, it's still mind blowing to me. You guys are all so incredibly talented. We yeah. have one here, another one that I love from Chad Miller. Chad wants to know. Will you and your sister be working on any new music? Yes. So right before uh, quarantine began, um, we were actually working on our first EP. So once quarantine, I mean, we're still now that we're just home all day, we're doing a lot of writing and, and working on music pretty much every day together. So once we're out of isolation, we will be going back to recording and, and we want to release stuff very soon. You guys are so good. And you directed that, that music video too. Did, did yeah. the directing bug bite you after that? Would you want to maybe direct something? I don't know, maybe script it next. Yes, I definitely, I, that's something my sister and I are definitely um, wanting to do. My sister and I are always, I love creating things with, with both of my sisters, but Maddie and I directed that music video just kind of out of, I don't know, there were, it sort of just like happened. We weren't really planning on it at first. We were going to have a friend direct it, like a couple, like we were talking to some friends of ours to direct it. And then it just got to this point where we're like, we needed to film it. And we're like, well, why don't we just, let's just do it and see how, how it goes. And I, afterwards, I'm like, oh, I, I want to do that again. And we want to direct more together. So we're definitely wanting to do that. I like the sound of that. I've got one last one for you here. And surprise, surprise, it's about Booksmart. Um, Elena wants to tell you and ask, your portrayal of Amy made me confident enough to come out to my parents. How does it make you feel knowing that you've had such impacts on people's lives like mine? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Oh God, that's, that's, thank you for saying that. I, I don't even, it's, oh, it's again, it's so overwhelming to me. I have to say that just in general, I love acting and acting is my favorite thing in the world. I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. Um, it's, it's just fun for me. So the fact that I'm able to do something fun and something that just is fulfilling to me but then on top of that do a do a 
do a role and tell a story that is that is so impactful on people's lives and allows people to really feel seen on top of just having fun i don't know what else i could i could do with or want to do with my life i think that i feel i already feel so lucky to just be doing movies and to be working as an actor because i know that that's a rarity but then to be able to tell stories that deserve to be told and 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 to give a voice to the voiceless and and to, to again to be a small part of that is just um what more could i ask for it just is it really really means the world to me i don't think there's a better place to wrap this up caitlin thank you so much for your time and i'll just echo what a lot of the commenters have expressed but keep doing what you're doing because not only are you delivering much needed entertainment right now but it's entertainment with purpose that's really making a difference so congratulations on everything and thank you so much for being on collider connected today Thank you so much for having me. This has been so nice, Perry. And it's been so nice to see your face. And I'm giving you a virtual hug. <laughs> I'm giving you a virtual hug, too. Dewey love. sends his love from the corner of the room. He opted to stop being destructed so we can have this conversation. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. And thanks to everybody out there for watching. We're going to have so much more Collider Connective interviews coming your way soon. Don't forget to like and share this one. And stay safe, everyone. Bye.